In this section, we explore a proof technique that can be applied not only to implications but to other statements as well. We call this technique proof by contradiction. Proof by contradiction is based on the following simple idea. Suppose that we have statements R and S, and we know that the implication not R implies S is true. However, we know that the conclusion S is false, then R must be true. Why is this so? We know that this implication is true, and we know that the conclusion S is false. What can we now say about the premise? Can the premise be true? No, because if the premise is true, you have a true premise but a false conclusion, which would mean that the implication is false. Hence, this cannot happen, so we now know that the premise not R must be false. If the premise not R is false, thus we have that R must be true. In a proof by contradiction, this S here is our contradiction. Here we are assuming that R is false. So we are supposing R is false. And then we arrived at a contradiction. Therefore, S, and that is a contradiction. If this is a contradiction, it means that the initial assumption that R is false is not true. So therefore, R must be true. How do we prove an implication P implies Q by contradiction? Recall that if we are proving P implies Q, if we go about it directly, we assume P. And then we want to show that Q is true. However, if we prove it by contradiction, we will now assume that Q is false and then arrive at a contradiction to find a contradiction somewhere and once we arrive at a contradiction it only means that our initial assumption that q is false is not true therefore q must be true so to summarize what i have just said here are the steps of proving something by contradiction assume the premise p and the negation of your conclusion and then find a contradiction and then at the end conclude that q must be true proof by contradiction is an indirect proof so therefore just like proofs by contrapositive you have to also tell your audience that you will be proving by contradiction let us have our first example. Let x be an integer. Prove that if 2 divides x, then 2 does not divide x squared plus 1. Take note of our conclusion here. We have a negated statement. 2 does not divide x squared plus 1. If we have negated statements, what is my reminder about that? It's easier to work with statements that are not negated. So if you will proceed by proving the contrapositive of this, the contrapositive will still have a negated statement because the contrapositive is that 2 divides x squared plus 1 and then show that 2 does not divide x. This is the contrapositive CP. Since the contrapositive still contains a negated statement, we will just proceed by contradiction. Let us start with our proof. We have the hypothesis let x be an integer and then our premise, suppose that 2 divides x. What does it mean for 2 to divide x? There exists an integer k such that x is equal to 2k. And then we will now suppose the negation of your conclusion. Assume on the contrary that 2 divides x squared plus 1. Since you said here that you are assuming on the contrary, you are telling your reader that you will proceed by contradiction. Hence, we can find an integer, let's call it L, because I already have a k here. Such that x squared plus 1 is equal to 2L. I'll call this 1 and then I'll call this 2. Plugging in equation 1 and equation 2, we get 4k squared 
plus 1 is equal to 2L. And then what will happen there? If we manipulate this equation, we will get 1 is equal to 2L minus 4K squared. And I have a common factor of 2. So I have 2L minus 2K squared. Let me just write this sentence here. What can we now say about this one? 1 is equal to 2 times L minus 2K squared. L and K squared are integers. This is saying that 2 divides 1. And that is your contradiction. Therefore, our assumption that 2 divides x squared plus 1 is false. So we have 2 does not divide x squared plus 1. Next, given an integer x, if x squared plus 2x minus 3 is odd, then x squared plus 4x minus 5 is odd. We will also proceed by contradiction here. So let us start with our premise that x squared plus 2x minus 3 is odd. And we are assuming the negation of our conclusion. Assume on the contrary that x squared plus 4x minus 5 is even. Hence... There exist integers k and l such that x squared plus 2x minus 3 is equal to 2k plus 1 since x squared plus 2x minus 3 is odd and x squared plus 4x minus 5 is equal to 2l for some integers k and l. How will we get a contradiction here? What can we do with this two? equations we can subtract this two if we subtract the above equations we get 2x minus 4x so that's negative 2x plus 2 is equal to 1 but this is 2 times negative x plus 1 just like in example 1 can you already see the contradiction here x is an integer and 1 is an integer, so therefore, negative x plus 1 is an integer. Thus, we get that 2 divides 1, a contradiction. Hence, this assumption is false. So, we get that x squared plus 4x minus 5 is odd. That concludes your proof. Take note that I did not write it here. You should include that statement here, let x be an integer for this one. This is important because you will be needing that here. For 2 to divide 1 here, x is an integer. That's why you will have a contradiction. For our next example, suppose that a is an even integer and b is an odd integer. Then 4 does not divide a squared plus 2b squared. Again, we have an implication here wherein the conclusion is a negated statement. So I will again proceed by contradiction. Let us start with our premise. A is even and B is an odd integer. Before I suppose the negation of the conclusion, let me just write down what it means for A to be even and B is odd so that we will no longer have to refer to this statement later on. So hence, A is equal to 2K and B is equal to 2L plus 1 for some integers K and L. Then we will now assume the negation of our conclusion. Assume on the contrary that 4 divides a squared plus 2b squared. Thus, a squared plus 2b squared is equal to 4 times an integer. Let me use m. I haven't used m.
let me call this equation 1 and equation 2. And then let's plug in the values in equation 1 to equation 2. We now get a is 2k. So a squared becomes 4k squared plus 2 times the square of 2l plus 1. So that's 4l squared plus 4l plus 1. And this is equal to 4m. Let me just simplify this. We get 4k squared plus 8l squared plus 8l plus 2 is equal to 4m. What will be our contradiction here? If we isolate 2 in the above equation, we get that 2 is equal to, look at that, 4m minus 4k squared minus 8l squared minus 8l. You have a common factor of 4. So this is m minus k squared minus 2l squared minus 2l. And what can we say about m minus k squared minus 2l squared minus 2l? This is an integer. And what is this saying? This is now saying that 4 divides 2, a contradiction. So therefore, our initial assumption here must be false. 4 does not divide a squared plus 2b squared. Before we proceed with our next example, let us first recall the known facts about odd and even integers. Here is our table. The sum of two even numbers is even. The sum of even and odd is odd and so on and so forth. And we also have this results over here. If m and n are of the same parity, then the sum m plus n is even. We have seen this in example 2 of lecture 8. We also have this one. If m n is even, then m is even or n is even. Moreover, we have this biconditional. The integer m squared is even if and only if m is even. Recall that if you have a biconditional P if and only if Q, this is equivalent to just two implications. P implies Q and Q implies P. We've seen this results in our previous video lectures. Take note also that P if and only if Q is equivalent to not P if and only if not Q. You can just put negation and then that statement will be true as long as you have a biconditional. You cannot do that if this is just a conditional or an implication. The reason why I mentioned this is because if you look at statement 3, this is now saying that M squared is odd if and only if M is odd. We are now ready to prove this statement, let m be an integer if 2 divides m and 4 does not divide m, there exists no integers x and y for which x squared plus 3y squared is equal to m. What is our premise here? 2 divides m and 4 does not divide m and our conclusion is there exists no integers x and y for which x squared plus 3y squared is equal to m. Hence, we will assume the negation of the conclusion. That is, we will assume that there are integers x and y for which this is true. We start with let m be an integer and we suppose that 2 divides m and 4 does not divide m. Next, we assume the negation of your conclusion. Assume on the contrary that there exist integers x and y such that x squared plus 3y squared is equal to m. Now let us go back to this assumption here that 2 divides m. Since 2 divides m, what can we say about m? m is even, right? 
So this is now saying that the sum of x squared and 3y squared is even. Now if we look at this statement 1 here, the converse of statement 1 is also true. I will leave it up to you as an exercise. That is, if the sum of two numbers is even, then they must have the same parity. You can actually see it from the table over here. You can get an even sum when you have even, even, and then odd, odd. However, I want you to prove it formally, so therefore that will be one of your exercises. So going back to this one, let's just say by the converse of statement 1, let's just say result 1, x squared and 3y squared must have the same parity. What do you think will happen now? If we know that they have the same parity, we will now have two cases. So for case 1, we assume that x squared and 3y squared are both even. And then for the second case, assume that they are both odd. So let us start with them being even. x squared is even means that, what can you say about x? Result 3 is saying that if the square of an integer is even, then that integer must be even. So we have, since x squared is even, then x must be even. Let's call this by result 3. What can we now say about y? You have a product of two numbers and that product is even, but one of them is odd. So therefore, what can you say? You have no other option but y squared to be even. That is actually result number 2. Look at result number 2. If the product is even, this is saying that at least one of them is even because we have m is even or n is even. In our case, we get 3y squared is even. If you plug it in there, you're saying that 3 is even or y squared is even. This implication is true. However, you already know that this is false. For this to be true, you now get that y squared must be even. Let me just write that here since... 3y squared is even and 3 is odd. y squared must be even by result 2. And then by result 3, we already have y squared is even. Therefore, y must be even as well. Thus, we know that both x and y are even. So we have x is equal to, what integers have I used here? Okay, I can use k and l. x is equal to 2k and y is equal to 2l. Then we will now go back to our x squared plus 3y squared equals m. And then let us try to find a contradiction. Let us plug in this values here in x squared plus 3y squared equals m. Let's call this equation 1 and let's call this... Equation 2, what do we get? We have 4k squared plus 3 times 4l squared is equal to m. What is that premise that we haven't used yet? We haven't used the fact that 4 does not divide m, right? But what do we see here? You have a common factor of 4 k squared plus 3l squared times 4 is equal to m. And k and l are integers. So thus, 4 divides m. And that is your contradiction. Because your premise is that 4 does not divide m. So we now have arrived at a contradiction, which means that this part here, the negated conclusion, must be false. That concludes your proof.